Welcome to Inspirations, a podcast where we discuss everything relevant to the Christian life. Now, here is your host, Jay Spurlock. All right, so today I'm joined by a special guest of mine, a good friend of mine, uh, one of my favorite artists. I usually say authors, but artists, and um, he also writes as well, so it could be an author. Eva McWhorter. I guess you could call that an author. I feel like under 200 pages is not, you're not, you're not allowed to say author, but oh, that's, you know. We, we won't mention national that's bestseller. What if I write seven books that are like 150 right. pages? Right. Man, and I'm like, I've seen all this art you're doing too, and I was like, who's doing your art, man? Because I like to see some of that, like, t-shirt wise yeah. and stuff, and you're like, oh, I, I do that on my iPad. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what do you Yeah, I, I started doing some freehand uh, illustration stuff, like, um, there's this guy I love, Joshua Noom, and all these different guys that do this kind of, like, old school kind of freehand feeling kind of art. It's almost could be a tattoo, you know, kind of right. thing. And uh, when I was going to have some art done for some great clothes stuff, I, I kept kind of, you know, having some people do things for me and show me stuff. And they were all good. Just wasn't quite what I was envisioning. So I hadn't right. drawn in a long time. but So I got the pen. I had the iPad Pro. And yeah. I started trying at it. And now I'm addicted to it. And I've been, <laughs> it's kind of become my side hobby where I've been designing stuff for, for people. And right. um, my friends at Red Letter Apparel. Um, I did a whole line of designs for them. Uh, if people want to check it out, all the proceeds go to them. They're yeah. amazing people. Yeah. And, uh, sure. but it's called red letter apparel. They're in like Kansas city or sorry, sweet Springs, Missouri. Okay. And if you go to red letter apparel, you can find a bunch of designs that I've done. That you right. can have put on t-shirts and stuff. So gotcha. it's kind of fun. I'm going to be putting all, all links in the show notes, but <laughs> so don't worry. Like you got so many links. I, I definitely, I love sending people um your way and also you know your buddy joel gertis yep. as well like his ministry as well y'all are just like a, a a great tag team to say so He's is that my computer friend. maybe we turn it off so oh, yeah. um let's see you have a new ep coming you have a new single well is it a new single you have a new song out you want to talk I'm about doing something song? very different that yeah. confuses people, I'm sure. Okay. We're we're going to release multiple singles and then make those an EP. And okay. an EP, by the way, for people that don't know, it stands for extended play. It's basically like more than one or two songs, but less than an album. So it's like, you know, four or five songs or something like that. I think technically if it's under 30 minutes or 30 minutes or something like that. It's, it's not an album. It has to be so many minutes to be an album. So, okay. yeah. So we're going to do, we're going to do a single every week starting this Friday, July right. 17th. We're going to release come Jesus come. Then the week after that, July 24th, we're releasing you have been there, which is uh, really kind of an addiction recovery anthem. You know, for uh, we just did a music video with a bunch of addiction recovery ministries mm -hmm. where they came in and we had them like sing along with the verses and hold up signs saying redeemed from heroin, uh, like real people redeemed from cocaine, from crystal meth. And it is so powerful. Right. And then on the 31st, we're releasing Better Man, which is a kind of a different song for me, but uh, more singer songwriter than I've ever done. But it just was really the Lord. So it's like, OK, we're doing mm -hmm. this. And then on the uh, 7th of August, we're releasing the last one called There is a Light. Mm -hmm. And the music video with it is an animated frame-by-frame -frame music video that my 13-year-old and 16-year-old did. They're like amazing frame-by-frame -frame animators. And I told them, I want something that looks like Yellow Submarine meets like a pop-up book. Right. And it's going to blow your mind. It's right. so fantastic. <laughs> I'm a proud dad moment. Man, uh, speaking on that, like I got to for a second i think one of your one of your uh prizes is often in the background and i just want to speak about your wife real quick oh Taylor. yeah she is extremely talented and yeah. like i just uh, i love seeing her helping you she's always promoting and and now she's kind of she's been on some of the songs right i'm sure she's pretty much sung on she has she's sung on every album everything i've ever done really mm -hmm. um but 
in the last couple of years, it, her presence on things has really stepped up. And mm. um, she's got her first co-write with me on a song, Come Jesus Come. She actually helped mm -hmm. write that song with me and uh, Brian Fowler and Hank Bentley. Right. And uh, so it was a lot of fun, just the Lord on it. But she is the um, kindest, most joy-filled, most selfless, supportive person you will ever meet. <laughs> and Man, I'm not I, just saying that because she's my wife. But no, true. no. And and I can tell you, you know, uh, in ministry, it's important to have someone like that in your corner, man, because I know you're on the road a lot, not probably yeah. recently, but, you know, always working and creating and, and she understands the purpose behind it. Um, she, she goes a lot with me. We yeah. have taken her and my kids on many trips mm -hmm. and that's so it's cool. A family, it's a family thing. Man, yeah. So. Cause yeah. I'll see they're doing the artwork too, man. So yeah. kind of all working over there. I love yeah. that. Love Slave that. labor, child labor. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to talk about come Jesus come? Um, you know, sure. I think you Whatever released you it in, what was it March when this all kind of went down, but you I felt think actually it was, the, it was right around the riot protesting stuff. Um, time flies recently, May. And yeah, it, because, um, uh, it was written before the protesting mm -hmm. and all that and mm -hmm. kind of where things, you know, there's already the pandemic, but things just incrementally started getting more um difficult <laughs> right right and uh and yeah so the you know I, I always tell people it's like as a christian as a believer um i've always believed in the second coming and the return of jesus right it's like as a christian it's theologically it's like yes i believe right. that check i have the right answer check right. but it's always been something that's kind of been in the background of my mm -hmm. faith Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, mm -hmm. it, I believe it, yes, but I don't think a lot about it or because I, I have misconceptions, maybe. Because mm -hmm. as believers, you know, one misconception is it's going to be this post-apocalyptic right. Mad Max scenario. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Thank right. you, the Left Behind series, for screwing everybody up. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. Or, or that's one misconception about what it is, right? If you're a believer that's not something you should be thinking like, you know, right. Right. And then the other misconception is this. I have, and this is the one we don't say out loud. It's I have plans and, and things that I want to do with my life. I mean, yeah, I mm. want you to kind of return, but not in my lifetime. Right. I have things I'm doing and I have things I want my children to do and things I'm building and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And that unto itself is, a misconception and what it's brought out of me is in this time of like worship and um when the song kind of was birthed the idea popped in my mind it was like the lord was like have you ever really truly longed for my return mm. and here i'll put it like this have you ever really truly longed for the longing of my heart mm. Because God, it's God's plan. Mm -hmm. It's his thing mm -hmm. that we're all a part of mm -hmm. that is the finished, completely finished thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I guess I just never really longed for it because I had so many misconceptions about it. Right. But then I read stuff like, oh, hang on. I read stuff like, uh, you know, Revelation 21, 34. Uh, mm -hmm. three through four and i heard a loud voice from the throne saying now the dwelling of god is with men and he will live with them and they will be his people and he will and god himself will be with them and be their god he will wipe every tear from their eyes mm -hmm. there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed and i love isaiah 65 says uh look i'm creating a new heaven a new earth and no one will even think about the old one anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's like so good. It's right. mind blowing. Right. But our problem is, is we, I don't think anyone can truly walk out their destiny, especially right now because of how things are. You want things to go back to the way they were. They never will. Mm -hmm. Not the way they were. It will be different. It's just going to be, you know, can't help right. it. And I think the thing is, is that you can't truly walk it out without longing, truly longing 
for him to return because when you really long for him to return, you build better here. Right. You right. love better here. Right. Instead of just, I'm building my thing for this world that's about Jesus. Right. But, right. Right. But if we don't build towards his return and long for his return, and by the way, there's a whole other aspect of that. But if we don't do that, when the pressing comes, which, by the way, many of us are experiencing, but we're going to experience more. I'm not being negative. I'm just, right. this is what it is. And we'll find out, that you'll see what the foundation is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I believe if your foundation isn't on Christ and a longing for him to return and to build here and love here towards his return, the pressing is going to take you out. It's just going to take you out. Mm. And, and here's the thing. How do you long for someone return that you don't truly love? Oh, no doubt. So you have to first get to really know him, truly mm. love him. And then you start to long for him because you know what he's like. Right. And it's this whole thing, man, that God's been really pal driving me about. And it's really for anybody watching, not just for me in the music and ministry, it's made my decision making really easy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, does this build towards his return? Is this something that matters? Hmm. Long after this world and this thing is gone, does this really matter? Right. And so it makes it easy for me to make a decision now, mm -hmm. right? Right. And um, I think that this is what this is where we are mm -hmm. as a people. Mm -hmm. Um and it makes us care more about what we do and the way we treat people. But that's the heart behind this song, Come Jesus Come, which is like, even in the chorus, it's like, you know, come and right every wrong. I wasn't just trying to be, we weren't trying to be clever. Right. I was literally like, okay, what? I got to say things. These things, I have to say, it, God. Right. This is what I literally desperately need and long for, is for you to come to right every wrong, heal every hurt. He'll make everything right. We even call, oh my gosh, we have such a screwed up idea about it. We call the return of Jesus the end times. The end times. Which right. sounds horrific. Right, right, right. right. I always right. say it's the beginning times of the writing of all things wrong. Right. Of the renewing, the redemption, all of it. It's so, it's crazy. It's So it's kind of been like a mind blowing mm -hmm. experience for me this season in a good way, like mm -hmm. pulling me into the place that I really have always needed to be. Right. Not just as a worship guy, but as a son of right. the living God. Right. So that's the heart behind the come Jesus come. I wanted to write a song first that I needed to sing and meant. Mm -hmm. And then that I believe the church has to sing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's not mine, it's that's something around that, right? Uh, right. It's a sense so, of urgency. Like you talked about, it wasn't supposed to be released till maybe now, right? Kind of originally. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to release the video or anything till like right around this time because the right. actual song fully releases this week. So now it's got like a choir on it and a few mm -hmm. extra, but not much. But um, But yeah, I just felt like God was like, if you don't do this right now and release this early. Okay. So I stayed up through the night, like the mm -hmm. night before it released, just making a quick video with snippets of right. the things going on in this world that are broken. And then the chorus, you know, come Jesus, come. I spent the night doing that just because God was like, if you don't do this, right. you're straight up ignoring me. Right. Right. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you have an agenda with marketing and all this kind right. of crap. Forget right. about that. You right. Know? So I, yeah. I bet that is a, a pull on you. Like I, I joke around by introducing you, but you really do have, you wear a lot of hats in your ministry, you know? Sure. Um, and so, you know, I kind of have my own little small ministry, but, you know, I find myself often tied up in other things and I forget to love the ones that God has put right here in front of me by looking out over and always trying to get that one more, you know? And it has brought that to my attention and in in something on my heart, you know? Uh, there's a lot of good things in this world, but it's, it, it's not God. Right. And, and kind of what you've been saying is, you know, I have all these plans, but we got to focus on the return of Jesus. You know, I think he's kind of changing all of our perspectives. And, it, and your plans may change, mm -hmm. but they also will get better. It's not like you become so heavenly minded, you know, earthly good. You right. actually become 
way more effective for the kingdom here. Right. When you long for him to return, mm -hmm. the things you build will have more meaning. Right. And the things you do will have more meaning. The people you bump into, you'll care more about it. You know, right. it's like, all right. Mind your all right. Um, I, I will say like, I've felt a kind of a, a pressing, more pressing of late. And I reached out to you kind of, cause I, man, you've always been, one thing about you and Joel and I mean, your entire band and ministry, I mean, I felt the presence of the spirit every time I saw y'all and anything I do with you. So like, I just kind of wanted to feel that and see if I was kind of feeling the same things. And so it is something different. It's a different season to say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. So we'll go on. We talked about come Jesus come. I want to go over all four songs just a little bit. If you want to talk about each one. Um, That's all good. Whatever yeah, you want to do. So, man. so the next one released on seven twenty four. You have been there. Yep. And uh, nothing takes you by surprise. Nothing wrong that you can't make right. One thing remains: you never change. You are faithful every time. Mm -hmm. And that's so hard to remember sometimes when you, you when you you know I face my dad's my father's death uh, here on earth yeah. in February, man. Sure. And, and I'll talk about that in just a second with Better Man, uh, but it it does change your you you tend to forget what God has done in the past and how He plans to redeem things. So, mm. um, one of the things the Israelites were it was weird they were really good at this because they were really bad at remembering, but they were really good at like going, you know, give thanks to the Lord for His love endures, you know, forever. You know, they would say what He had done, like He brought us through the Red Sea, right? Right. Give thanks to the Lord for His faithful love endures forever. And then they would say something else. And um, I think just as individuals, sometimes it's important for us to go, man, God, you brought me through this. Right. I can't believe that I was a meth addict and you redeemed my life. Right. You're good. And your right. faithful love endures forever. Right. And to just kind of go over that stuff sometimes, and it's, it's, it's good medicine. And it also builds up your uh, intimacy with the Lord and um, your faith and what right. he can do. Do you want to, do you want to talk about, I was going to give you an opportunity at the end because I know you always share your testimony. And I think you should because it's so powerful. Uh, I mean, don't have to. You can send people to a link if you okay. want or whatever you want to do. Okay. But it is powerful, and I will definitely do that. I've done it. And that, that, even though that's that, like that song, you know, I've uh -huh. been to hell and back, and I will remind my past that you've been there through it all. It's like those kind of things uh, for me. It, it, I was thinking people in general, but also. Um, we do a lot of ministry with Christ Centered Addiction Recovery Ministries. Uh -huh. And so even when we do events and somebody books us, we're like, make sure you find the local Christ Centered Addiction Recovery places. Mm -hmm. And we want to give them so many tickets and make sure they're able to come out. Right, right. Because, you know, having been a former meth addict when I was younger, radical counter of the Lord, gave my life to Christ. Um, that's a big part of who I am. It's a big part of my story. And so when we did this song, like I was saying, we did a music video we had all these people come in and uh, from addiction recovery houses and uh, we had them hold up cards singing those verse lyrics and clipping from person to person, like, you know, redeemed from crystal meth, rescued from heroin, uh, you know, uh, saved from suicide, like all mm -hmm. these kind of things that God did. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's this is the Lord, man. I'm not like, it doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm like, I'm not that creative. I mean, right. I guess I am, but I'm not like, it's right. the Lord. Right. He's the creative one. Right. And I'm just getting to, I'm along for the ride. <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, you. but watching those people sing that stuff and each one of those stories are so precious to the Lord and so impact, and pow powerful and important to him. It just kind of brings everything into perspective. You, you know, know, you talk about that of recovery. It's really been on my heart. I read something, an older book of mine. It's about the gospels and redemption and recovery, but it kind of alluded to the fact that we're all recovering, not to like, there is the recovery from the drugs and, and everything, but we, if sure. once we sense that, like we're all recovering something when we come to this earth, you know, and give our life to Jesus. It's a, yeah. it's a journey of recovery. We might be on different levels to say, um, right. but I've really felt like that. Sure. <laughs> Been true. Absolutely. So, better man. I'm not supposed to pick favorites, but 
That's okay. And this has been one that's on repeat, man. And I'm telling you, you know, I was listening to it just a minute ago before I came on here on the YouTube, the acoustic uh, version. And it was, you posted that February 12th. Well, that's when my father passed. And I'm not, I know you're not talking about better man, but when I also understand my two fathers now, you know, sure. my dad meant the world to me and he right. always pointed me to Jesus. And right. then, and then this song to me, it just, it's the story of all of us. Yeah. The measure, they say the measure of a man is that he's strong and never weak, but I couldn't break the chains I wore. It took a better man than me. Mm. They never say, let them see you cry. You got to hide your troubles deep to show him how to lay them down. It took a better man than me. Whew. I mean, what is this song meant to you? You said this is kind of one of your first. <laughs> you said it in a. I mean, not first, but right. as a, as for what I do, it's uh-huh. a little bit more singer songwritery. I wouldn't say, "Oh, hey, here's a great church song to do on Sunday morning for right. your congregation," because it's kind of gender specific. But at the right. same time, you know, I'm raising all boys, and right. um, and I um, I didn't have a great relationship with my earthly father as well. You know, unfortunately, I mm-hmm. didn't. Um, and I think for people in general, I think, you know, one of the ways that, um, the enemy kind of goes at the family is he goes straight for the father. You know, Mm -hmm. if you take out the father, you take out the representation of the heavenly father in the home, you know? Right. And, uh, that's not to take away from single moms out there, by the way, you guys are like frontline heroes. Okay. Um, or, you know, single parents in, in general, but they're, there is this thing about a, a father and a father's representation of the father. Mm-hmm. And there's so many stigmas laid on men for what it means to be a man, you know? And I love the, the, the reality that Jesus isn't um, some exception. He's the example. Right. Cause the chorus is like, you know, Jesus, you're a better man than me. Uh, you're the only one that ever could show me who I'm meant to be. So it's not just that I can never measure up or whatever, but it's that he literally says, no, I'm now in you. Mm -hmm. You will do greater things than me. So it says in the Bible, it's like, he is showing me what a man really looks like. Right. You know, and he's not only is he showing me, he's like, this is, you can do this. Right. Um, You can walk in this. And, um, I don't know. Just as a father, and you know, I'm I'm not like a manly man, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, um, I'm not. I don't go hunting. I'm not a big sports guy. Sorry, everybody. Sure. Uh, but um, I don't think anyone that knows me would be shocked by those statements. <laughs> but um, but you know, it's like I, I still feel like because I um, have always been really really genuine about my faith with my kids like I've always been very real about it it's not this like you know the guy like in my testimony I always say you know the, the my father my earthly father uh was an evangelist and I would see him get up on Sunday morning and preach about Jesus and then behind closed doors I'd see him be a totally different person right um and I just that always pushed me away so once I had a real encounter with the Lord um I always wanted to be real behind closed doors with my kids. Like I, I, I want them to see that I mean it when nobody's watching, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so I think for me that that's been the image that that's what Jesus has led me to as a man for my kids, you know? Um, it's okay to be real, you know, right. it's okay to say you're sorry. It's right. very manly to say you're sorry. Um, and there's just all these different things. It's just, for me, I think it's kind of like for the church in general, for people in general, we just need some songs that kind of just go, Hey, mm-hmm. Hey all right. dude. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> and, and it can be gender specific in a way, but also just man in general, I kind of the way I see it too. You can see it yeah. two different ways. And, and, you know, going back to the father and the, and, and your children, um, you know, I, my dad, was a construction guy he built barns he built houses i can't build a bookshelf without like youtube videos right so but he really more is caught than taught and i really see how your children probably see the example that you said and like you said 
your dad knew all the knowledge and, and taught it, but it didn't add up on the other side. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's just, and I'll go on to verse two. Cause I mean, pride, I think is number one thing for most men to really swallow. It says, they say pride comes before the fall. I know it all too easy. I couldn't make it on my own. It took a better man than me. They say a man must strive and work hard, hard to earn his keep, but there's only one who provides and he's a better man than me. Ooh. So I good. feel like I'm on like inside the actor's studio as you're like reading my lyrics. <laughs> you know me, you know me. I'm like, I got to find the lyrics. You're like, I need another on the website. Okay. Like, yeah, that's them. But yeah, no, it's good. And um, yeah, uh, interesting, you know, I mean, it's very the Lord, like the whole song. It, it, I think we wrote that song in about 45 minutes. <laughs> right. It, but, you know, the really good ones like that, that are, that are just like right. fun and different to, mm-hmm. to, to write, mm-hmm. go quick. So I was at Brian Fowler's place and he literally was like, hey, I got to go outside to take a call just real quick. I'll be back in just a minute. So he was gone like 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And he came back in and I was sitting at the piano and I just had this whole like very singer songwriter idea, which was like the whole first verse. And then we just finished it. And um, it was just kind of one of those fun moments where you're like, gosh, this is so fun to write something like this. Mm-hmm. And it's so needed, you know? Right. So, very yeah, man. Cool. Very cool. All right. And then this one's coming my, <laughs> one of my favorites too. There is a light. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of my ministry is shine through darkness, let your light shine. I try to tell kids yeah. my wristbands glow in the dark when, when it's dark surrounds them. Reminder that the light's always there. Yeah. It speaks to me, you know, and this song continues to grow on me more and more. You want to talk a little bit about how this came about? Um, well, I mean, again, you know, it's like, all these songs when I look at them, it's funny how when you put something out, you know, there are only four songs. It's not right. like I did a big long album or anything, but still, you know, you're during this time, it was good to be creative because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think a lot of people felt like everything got put on hold, but like the Lord really kind of opened the floodgates for me on stuff. And now it's funny how you don't pay attention to it until you look back and the songs are done and you're like, there's like this theme. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're like, hey, wow, hold on. You know, come, Jesus, come, because you're going to be there with us through all this stuff that's going on. You're showing it so what it looks like to be who we're meant to be during it. Mm-hmm. And you're the light in us that shines in us, on us, and through us in the darkness during this time. And as the bride, as the church, Jesus wants to shine right now, not cower, not hide, not be afraid. He wants to shine. He wants, he wants everywhere we've set our feet is holy ground. And I'm not saying there's not wisdom, but I'm seeing more fear than I'm seeing wisdom. And I'm not talking about masks or no masks. I'm talking about being the bride. I'm just like, listen to your father. Just like Jesus said, I do whatever the father says to do. I go wherever the father says to go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm right you know right and some of us just need to turn off oh never mind forget it i won't go there i always stay away from that though you'll never see a post from me about anything right. political i'm kind of not gonna do it right now and yeah. i'm just gonna say in jesus name whatever your father is doing do it right and whatever your father is saying listen go mm. follow mm. Mm-hmm. hear him his voice will always be a voice that is calling you to be brave mm-hmm. do not be afraid i mean he says that quite often in the bible i right. think there's a reason and it's a do not be afraid right. do not be scared do not cower we are not like man that we would sh- you know shrink back we're not like the world that we cower in fear and i'm just calling people that if it feels like hopelessness it's not the lord mm-hmm. if it feels like worry is wreaking havoc on you it's not your father Hmm. pay attention you'll know it by its fruit right know it by his voice his voice is not calling you 
to lose your mind in fear, Mm. to be paranoid. He's not calling you to these things. He's calling you to wisdom, hope, love, peace. All these things are of, of him. And you'll know when it's him. And when you walk in those things, I, I love, um, where is this? Hang on a second. Daniel. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, those who leave, this is Daniel 12, 3. Okay. Those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky. And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like a star forever. There's this thing in the mist. And by the way, that whole passage, that section is about uh, at the time of like the return is what it's talking uh, about. That's right. the whole section. Right. And it's literally like at that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over our nation, your nations will rise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book of life will be rescued. Mm. Many of those whose bodies are lie dead and buried will rise up some to everlasting life and some to shame and, and disgrace. Those who are wise, will shine as bright as the sky and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so charged with the Lord. You said that's Daniel. That's that's Daniel 12, the last chapter of Daniel. And um, it's like, it's funny. You know, Joel said this and I agree. It's like every generation could say, Oh, has it ever been worse than this? Every generation could say, right. Right. So I'm not, like saying this is you know whatever my point is is i'm not making predictions i'm not saying anything but i am saying there is an urgency Mm -hmm. right now there is a real importance to pressing into the to the lord to knowing him and longing for him to return and in those two things you're going to love people better. You're going to reach people more effectively. You're going to shine. And you're going to lead people to righteousness. You're going to lead people to Christ with your life in a way that you never have. Mm-hmm. And um, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. And so I guess coming back to the song, it's like songs, whatever. But there is a light it's jesus and it's christ in you it's not just some cheesy bible school sunday school idea of this little light of mine it's real mm. you are a light under the earth you don't go into when you have the holy spirit inside of you you don't go in a room and go please 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 god let light fill this room no you go into that room and light comes with you mm. you right. are the light that right. God is, is in you. You're a tabernacle for the living God. And these are just like, this is Christianity 101 in many ways. Right. Right. And for some of us, it's like unlocking that and moving that veil so that we grasp it. Um, and sometimes it takes this pressing and shaking that's going on on the earth right yep. now to get us to really grab a hold of the fundamental, powerful truths hmm. that make the gospel so special and right. so real right oh, so good I, i'm reading you know shine jesus shine i'm trying what i what i read these are like the you singing them comes to mind <laughs> try to but anyways come and fill the earth with a holy fire when i hear that i know what you're saying but to me it's like whoa and then what came to me also is one of those songs in the original it's both holy desire it's both it's both it's both terrifying and exciting right it's both good and there's like this right kind of reverence Mm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um and kind of fear and awe of what god's gonna do and can do right Mm. and remember he's good and Mm. it's all for the good that he has planned you know the disciples if you think about this i keep coming back to this if you think about this the disciples they never preached and talked as much about the cross as we do. Mm. Now, I'm not just little, I'm not belittling the cross. The cross is critical. Right. Okay, it's it, it was solidified everything, right? But what they talked about the most was the hope set before them. 
They mm-hmm. talked the most about Jesus coming back. Mm-hmm. That was the thing. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it was the thing for Jesus too. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's a big deal. And and when the disciples, everything they did was towards that. It's mm. a good point. And everything we do should be towards that, not in a way where we're like, you know, some cult kind of thing where we're sitting waiting for some spaceship right. to show up. Right. I'm right. talking about like the right. real deal, right? Mm-hmm where our heads and our hearts are placed in the right place. And mm. that's my whole heart behind this whole project. And not just this project, forget about that. Everything I do from now on the rest of my right. life, Yeah. you know, this is a project. It, it's not, I'm not the project. Mm-hmm. The project is just a byproduct of who I am All right. and what God's doing in my life. Right. You know, right. so this project will come and go uh, and there'll be more things that God wants to do, right. you know? Right. That's so powerful. I gotta, I gotta mention this one, this one line, cause it's like an anthem. Um, I know the truth and the truth has set me free. You know, that sounds so simple, but it's so true. Funny thing about the simple things is that there, we let them become simple and we let them become cliche. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always say to people, like, some of the things that are, like, cliche, like, when you hear the Lord say them to you for the first time, like, really hear, it unlocks something that's been dormant inside you your entire life. And when you grasp the full idea of, like, what freedom really is and how to know him is to know truth, when you start, like, that, like, really unlocks in you what it means, it should blow your mind. Right. You shouldn't, you should never go. Oh yeah, I know that. I've I've gone to Sunday school and I've read I've read theology books. No, uh, that should blow your mind. Yeah. It should blow my mind, and it, it it should it it should cause us to sing and dance. It should cause us to just be floored mm-hmm. by His grace and His goodness. Because mm-hmm. you think you know what freedom means <laughs> until you realize you've been in bondage right. to something to a lie or to a thought until you become free, really free. Um, yeah. That's, and only through knowing him, the one who is actually truth, can you begin to step into that freedom? Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I speak on that of the spirit? Um, uh, four years ago, I guess I came to see y'all in Madison, uh, Tennessee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And afterwards y'all prayed with me. Yeah. But, I just, I've never, I grew up real small church and, and whatever. So we're all praying and I was just kind of antsy a little bit, you know, and it, sure. Like, can I pray for you? And I was like, okay. And it was just some silence and it was just, I don't know, something I wasn't used to. And, and Joe's, I started to speak and Joe's like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> did he shush you? Yeah, he went, <laughs> okay. And uh, I went, part of that is like, you got to listen, you know, for a minute. And yeah. it's like, uh, that's funny. I don't yeah. remember him shushing you, but yeah. that's fantastic. But, but then it's like... But it was more of a, it's okay. Shush. Oh, it was a great, <laughs> right, right. And I'm glad he did it. And it, so, and you, you mentioned, you know, I feel like I can I pray for you and, and your sisters or something with your sister and, you know, go on my story. It did involve my sister, what I was going through. And I'll never forget like I, that was like my true real encounter. I felt like with the spirit in you brought it out in me mm. and I've never been the same to say that. Like I now I've heard about the spirit, but it was always, you know, I don't know. I just felt like it was something, something different. about when somebody says something that no one should know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no one knows. There's no way you should go. That yeah. could only be God. Yeah. Like, um, because no offense between the time you walked up to the stage, I didn't have time to go on Facebook, hunt you down and right. find out what's going right. on in your life. No, you didn't. So it's like, and God, my first encounter with, with real, the reality, and it sounds crazy, but many of us, we say we be, we're Christians as in, I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat or I'm part of this club or that club. 
but to believe, like to really encounter the reality of God is the moment where it kicks in, you know? And I'll, I'll never forget somebody praying for me the same way. And actually it was me praying for someone else where somebody said, Hey, will you join us to pray for somebody? And uh, they actually, somebody prayed over me and did the same thing. And I was like, mm. how could you know that? And I remember bawling like a baby because I knew in that moment, like, I had known from my own encounter with the Lord that he was real, but I went through a season of life where I just started doing all the Christian things right. and let myself get away from the wonder uh, that I experienced one night in that room when I got saved. Mm. And I just started doing the cor climbing the Christian corporate ladder, you know, b staff meetings, doing church thing. It was great. Then um, some crazy stuff happened in my life and somebody prayed over me things that they could not and could not have known. Only the Lord could have known that rocked my world. It was like for the first time ever, the Lord just said, poke through reality. And I was like, like oh my I've gosh, I forgot you're real. All I right. forgot how, that you're real. And, um, yeah, that's, that it's something about that. It's just mm -hmm. special, man, mm -hmm. but it's a listening. Yeah. How do you know, for those of you listening, if you're wondering, well, how do you pray like that for somebody since you're touching on that? And it, just mm -hmm. to say this real quick, mm -hmm. um, there's a story that somebody tells about, like, it goes like this. Okay. Somebody calls me that I haven't talked to in 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they go, Hey, I'm like, who is this? Uh, it's me, blah, blah, blah. Well, we haven't talked in 10 years, blah, blah, blah. How am I right. going to know it's you by right. just, Hey, right. but if my wife who I've been with for over 26 years calls me and goes, uh, -uh. Right. I'm like, right. yes, dear. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I'm so used to her voice because I spend so much time with her. That's all she has to do. And I know it's her. Mm -hmm. If I spend so much time with the Lord, all he has to do is breathe in a room of 10,000. And I know it's him. Hmm. And if you spend so much time with him in his word, knowing what he's like, getting to know him, his character, his nature, um, you'll know his voice from your thoughts. Mm. And um, you can start to trust you those things because you spend so much time with him in the secret place. Right. Preach. Yeah. We give our heart to, to God to say, or we allow him to come into our heart and it, you know, I forgot exactly where it is in scripture, but Paul says to renew your mind. And that's really been on my, yep. my mind a lot because a lot of us give our life to Jesus and, and whatever. And we still try to go through the world thinking the same way with the same operating system as we had before. And it's truly going to the Lord every day and letting them renew your mind. I think it's Romans 12 too. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Then you will be able to, to know what God's will is, it talks about, to mm -hmm. test and discern. Mm -hmm. um, does your mind is focused, is set. Colossians 3 says, set your mind above where Christ is seated right. uh, in the heavenly places. Right. Set your mind on him. Right. Think about him, dwell on him, be with him, spend time with him. Right. You know, it's good, man. So good. Well, uh, I want to talk, you said about uh, God is real. That made me, you have an app. I'm going to put that in the show notes. I'll push people to that. The devotionals, um, uh, like you said, uh, what else? There's a bunch of. You should just have a big button that just says Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I love your app, though, man. I really do because it's so it's clean and crisp, and it, I go to it a lot. It's it's powerful. So we just uh, wanted to create a place where there was a lot of devotional content and some free. It's all free mm -hmm. and like worship content that we could just give away. Mm -hmm. um so yeah okay and uh last but not least I, I mean i want to um if if someone wants to support your ministry um mm -hmm. because i've I, you and joel and everybody in the artist uh industry or i guess what you would call it music industry i know it's sure. a different time man and and it is and uh you you remain faithful in creating and letting the lord reveal what he wants to say and i i support that so much so um if we'd like to do that you can find that at your website too right Stephen mcwarder mm -hmm. and uh, yeah the, i do smworship.com okay. because it's easier to spell <laughs> right 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 gotcha well <laughs> yeah man, i appreciate you taking some time with me oh thanks man you've really um 
you've impacted me so much and I appreciate what God has done through you to me and, and, um, and Joel and the entire, as far as y'all go back, you know that. So, yeah, man, well, you've been a blessing to us and we, we, we love people. We love to meet like you and people. It's like for us, it's not, we, we, we're not the kind of people that like play and get on a bus and leave. Right. Um, everyone we meet, we believe there's the potential of a real relationship with those people not just and so we're quick to be like here's our cell number here's our email <laughs> call, text us call us let's right. be actual friends not like just we met one time somewhere um yes so and that's that important to us the world to me and you know i saw was it the other day you were able to get somewhere and you let mm-hmm. was it 60 or 70 people to christ or something we uh, played a thing numbers, our but... first one it was the beginning of june we haven't played a lot of things right. but um and it was again it was a christ Center addiction recovery right. thing there was 500 people 67 people got saved um came to give their lives to christ on so I do like my testimony and right. just a very honest altar call kind of deal, if you call mm-hmm. it that. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a lot of favor on that with the Lord with us. I can't say it's me because mm-hmm. we've been doing this a long time and something happened a couple of years back where the Holy Spirit just like flipped the switch mm-hmm. and he saves people. So it's not just about me, No, it's, but, right. but I do believe sometimes the Lord's like, Hey, I'm not going to take you into the fullness of your destiny till your character's ready. Cause if your character's not ready, <laughs> mm this is not going to go well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I don't know. I think he just, for whatever his own reasons, his own sovereignty, just like something happened. He just flipped the switch and people, the softening of hearts for people to want to, I think it's just harvest time. I think it's the environment that the spirit cultivates that y'all mm-hmm. lead. I really do. I mean, it's something. Well, I think it's harvest time for, for the bride in mm-hmm. general. The question is, Will we actually allow the Lord to minister and to do what he wants in an environment? I'm not talking about chaos. Right. And I'm not talking about like that there can't be a little structure to it, right. but just to hold loosely to the, right. you know, I remember years back I went to a church and we were praying before we went in and I, I don't tell the story very often. <laughs> Because I don't want people to say it the wrong way, but right. we were going to this church and we were praying and one of the guys in the band said something. He said, you know, man, as I'm praying for this church, I saw this image of like a bad tooth being pulled. And I said, well, don't ever say that again. Right. <laughs> right. That sounds crazy. You don't say right. that all out. Well, we get to this church, we're leading worship and, um, and this is like a suit and coat church. Not that there's anything wrong. There's spirit filled suit and coat churches. That's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just giving you an idea. This is a very prim and proper traditional style church. And we were leading worship. And I don't know what happened, but the Holy Spirit just like dropped. And and half the room was literally on their knees, weeping and crying out. And I was crying on stage. And it's like, that's not always happening, right? Mm -mm. So it was like, I was like, it was an unprecedented weightiness from the Lord going on in this room and the associate pastor got up on the stage and in my mind I thought well he's going to address this he has to right I just assume he's going to start ministering to people and telling people to come out and give their lives to Jesus and when he came up on stage he just said everybody get back to your seats we're going to do announcements and uh (laughs) I won't lie I was like legitimately but, angry and yeah. that sounds terrible right i'm not not at the guy i don't know i was just like right. what is happening and then the guy says this he says as an anecdote to get into his time of doing the announcements he says we all have things we don't want to do this week i have to have a tooth pulled yeah and so like <laughs> me and the guy who prayed this that's on stage are like looking at each other going <laughs> you know like that is like total like shock and all right we're just right. Like, freaking out and then the Lord was like, made it very clear to me in that moment, because I was like, God, what does this mean? You know? And when the program trumps the presence of God, mm. it's like a bad tooth that has to be pulled. Mm. Because in that moment, it was literally people were ready to give their lives to Christ. Right. And they went to announcements because that's what was programmed into the day. And I understand that. 
but it's not okay. No. I'll just say it. Right. It's just not. I'm sorry. Right. And I would say that because I know that that's what Jesus would say. Right. It's not okay. Right. Because we have to allow the Spirit of God in these rooms. It's about the harvest. People are so, we're supposed, we're the bride. We're supposed to see people come into the bride, mm -hmm. right? Because the bridegroom is returning. And right. we will be in the bridal feast, the banquet together. Right. Right. And we want as many in that banquet feast as possible. Right. Amen. I'm sorry. There are no announcements. There are no potlucks that are so important. But that it's more important than that. It's so and true. so it's just we have to, like, start changing the way we think. Mm. And start thinking, changing the way we do whatever it is we do to make sure that we're keeping the most important things first. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Amen, brother. All I right, dude. That, I had that same kind of vision too, man. It feels like sometimes it is programming over. I'm just letting the Lord lead present. Now, there's nothing wrong with planning. No, no. We, uh, we can plan things. The Lord directs our God step. shows up and does something. Right. You better believe I'm going to throw out my entire plan. Right. Because yeah. it's not gonna be as good as his right so. exactly all right man i love you dude i appreciate love you too, man. times with me and, yeah dude uh, anytime praying for your ministry and praying for the the new ep and i'll put all those links and you know i'll be promoting it so <laughs> <Great>. <laughs>